Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Peter Heinrich, and I am a developer evangelist for Amazon, which I admit is kind of a strange title. It, it basically means that if you do any kind of work with Amazon devices or services, then I will be there to help you direct you to the right resources. So it's a kind of a mix between tech support and engineering and a little bit of marketing thrown in. But of course, I didn't always do this. My background is actually in AAA games. I spent about 15 years uh, working on console and PC games. Um, and then moving to Amazon, I managed to somehow convince them to keep sending me to GDC. So I'm super excited to be here. I'm actually here to talk about GameOn, which is a brand new service that we just announced Monday to help you build community and add competition to your games. Now, GameOn is actually part of a larger uh, set of game services and technologies that Amazon is trying to promote, which we collectively call game tech. And it includes things like uh, infrastructure that we provide, like game servers and analytics, and even whole game backends running on AWS. The Alexa Skills Kit actually is another good example of that. It also includes pre-built services and tools, like GameLift and GameSparks. Um, Development tools provided by Twitch Dev are also included in that category. There are also resources for game content creation, like our AAA um, game engine, Lumberyard. And finally, of course, we can help with distribution and marketing across Amazon.com, across the Amazon App Store, and of course, Twitch. So Game On falls into this category. It's a pre-built game service that you can call from any device uh, or any operating system. So. We all know that competitive games are basically killing it on PC and console. Nine of the 10 top grossing games in the US are in this category. And actually, to tell you the truth, even the one that isn't, doesn't have a little green uh, arrow there, Minecraft, you know, I, I would probably include it. There's so many great third-party MOBAs built on top of that that uh, I think it actually qualifies. But we saw a huge opportunity on mobile that most devs don't go after. And if you were here for Mike's talk uh, a minute ago, he, he also referred to this data, which I think is com very, very compelling. It basically shows that there's evidence that mobile games can benefit just as much as PC titles if they incorporate competition in a similar way. So there's really nothing inherent to mobile that is going to prevent that kind of success. So one popular mobile game that we looked at, for example, got a big boost after introducing tournament play. And you can see how Twitch viewership spiked, and that drove a huge bump in revenue early on, which also included a pretty healthy lift in downloads that took quite some time to fall off. So why don't more mobile games try this? Well, to begin with, it's not trivial to roll your own competition management and player grouping and authentication and fraud detection and all those operational components. So that's what motiv motivated us to create the game on service. And it's a service that will handle all those details so that you don't have to do that. You can concentrate on what's actually important to you, which is making great games that are fun. So on top of that, we also included support for real world physical prizes that you can award in the competitions that you run on the service. So under the covers, Game On is just a collection of web services running on AWS. So it's robust, it's scalable, it's reliable, it performs well, even when it's under load. And if you want to learn more about the supporting technology, this booth is actually the perfect place. Uh, you can dive into any of the areas that interest you. And there's definitely a ton of people here to help you learn about any particular technology. So Game On is an API. It's a REST interface. It's not an SDK. That means it's platform agnostic. It's language agnostic. As long as you can send HTTPS requests, then you can use Game On from whatever uh, framework or operating system or device that you want. And we don't force you down a particular path with respect to the communication channel either. You can use whatever language or um, communication library that you want to. So what does this actually look like, practically speaking? For today, I thought it might be informative to show you how you might incorporate Game On into a simple game developed uh, in Unity. So here's the game that I want to upgrade. It's Super Zombie Runner, which, as you might expect, is an infinite runner. 
with zombies. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, and of course, the whole point of this game is simply to get as far as you can and jump over obstacles. And of course, you want to avoid trying, tr oh, getting trapped and then dead. Okay, well, so I see my personal score after each run, but I want to add competitive play. So the first thing I do is add a little bit of UI to introduce tournaments. I can throw up the screen that allows me to see what tournaments, uh, see that there are tournaments available. And then I can query the game on service to see the games that I've set up in, uh, in the console. Now that I've clicked on one, I get some details about this particular tournament. It shows what prizes are available. And I can try playing the game again. This, oh, I still didn't get very far. But this time, now I see a leaderboard, and I'm getting this data directly from the game on service. It shows me where I fell in the competition. I can give it another shot, jump right back into the, into the game, and see if I can get a little bit further this time. Oh, OK, I'm getting a little better at jumping. Ah, oh, barely missed. Good. I'm going to try for some combos here. OK, jump off. Hit the furniture. Yes. Good sign. I'm doing a little better. I'm getting, there actually there's a fidget spinner on the line here, so I want to do as, as good as I can. Uh, and OK, finally, now I see I get a little more information from Game On showing that I've actually achieved first place global rank and the first uh, opportunity now for me to actually claim the prize. So you can see I've won the $25 Whole Foods gift card that the developer has established for this particular tournament. And it's up to me now as the player. I can just click that claim button, and it will automatically mail it to my doorstep. So how do you do that? Well, the first step in using Game On in your game is to actually set yourself up as an Amazon developer, which is actually pretty trivial. You can do it in about two minutes. You can use your login that you use normally for Amazon if you already have an Amazon account, which is probably pretty likely. And then once you do that, you can get access to our entire uh, dev portal, which is where you're going to configure the Game On service. Once you tell us a little bit about your game, like the title and the price and when it's going to be available and that kind of thing, then we'll actually generate three keys for you. And these keys are what you use to communicate with the service and authenticate your usage. So the first is actually our own public key, our public encryption key that, Am uh, that Amazon uses. And that's so that you can send us secure data when the service requires it. Then, of course, there's a public API key, which I mentioned that you normally include in every request to the service. And finally, there's a special admin access key that you would use to, um, to get access to certain more advanced configuration and management features. So you'll see these keys on our Dove portal. We'll also send you an email. Um, and then once you have them, you can actually start making calls to the game on service. And I just want to mention here that everything that, I, that I'm going to talk about, everything that I'm going to go over, is also documented in depth on our dev portal, which is at dev, uh, developer.amazon.com. So if you have any specific questions, of course, bring them to me first if you want, since I'm here. Otherwise, go up to our dev portal, and you can check out all this information and sample code. So the first step in actually using the service is establishing a secure communication channel between your game and Game On. Whenever a player connects to Game On via your game from a device that we haven't seen before, we're going to assign it a unique token. And we want you to keep that private, so we use public key encryption to send it to you. And there are a few steps involved, which can be slightly confusing if you're not used to dealing with public key encryption. Um, or even if it's completely new to you. So I think it's worth walking through the process, just talking about the high-level steps, uh, just to clarify exactly how this communication channel works. So first, you're going to generate a public-private key pair. And this is going to be an RSA 1024-bit uh, key, uh, key pair, actually. It is a pair, <laughs> public and a private key. And most systems that you work with are actually going to have uh, code or libraries to support this. If they don't, then you can use a third-party provider such as Bouncy Castle, which is widely available on a, on a broad array of uh, devices and operating systems. And it works with a bunch of different uh, programming languages. Next, you're going to use the public key that we sent you to encrypt the public key that you just generated. Then you're going to call the Game On API register player, which actually 
is what sends us the encrypted public key that you just created. We'll go ahead and create a unique token for the current device, and then we'll send it to you encrypted using the public key that you sent to us. So that way, when you get it back, you can use your private key to decrypt it. Now that you've got the token, we need to make sure no one else can snoop it when you pass it back to us when you make those API calls so you can use our public key again to encrypt it, to protect it from uh, eavesdroppers. And this encrypted token is good indefinitely. So you can save it for later use, and then you use it whenever you want to establish a game on session. So as I said, it's not too terribly complicated. But if you haven't had to do it in the past, it may be a tad unfamiliar. So there is enough to it, though, that I thought it would be helpful to have a utility class. I've got this little helper class that I wrote in Unity uh, that basically just provides a wrapper to the bouncy castle calls. And of course, you can substitute whatever uh, encryption library that you want to use. I highly recommend, however, that you do use an encryption library. Don't roll your own code when it comes to public key encryption. It just is better to rely on the professionals to do this stuff the right way the first time. So in my case, bouncy castle makes it pretty easy. I use their public key factory to unpack the public key that I got from game on and then store it for later use. And then I use their RSA key generator, key pair generator class to just spit out the public and private keys that, that I need. There are a few other helper methods uh, to deal with back and forth for the token exchange, but there's really not much else to it. And you can see all the code if you check out our documentation online. So once we have these, uh, the API, uh, sorry, once we have the token for that player's device, then we can use it to actually initiate a game on session whenever we want. And we authenticate the current user against the service and return that session ID in return. Now, for all the API calls that we're going to look at today, I created some convenience methods to pack the HTTPS request that we make and then unpack the response. And here's how authentication works. So first, I look at the local storage to see if I have the token that I need. And if not, I go through that key exchange process that I just described. I uh, wrap it up in a, in a uh, method called register player, as you can see. And then if successful, that call will take the token that I've retrieved from the service and store it locally. And then the data that GameOn needs for each function is encapsulated in some utility classes that I created. So it has fields for the data that I'm going to pass back and forth. In this case, the auth player request object includes a parameter for the token that we're going to send, as well as some fields for other data that the API expects us to provide. So now I can send the request to the game on service, and I can pass along some callbacks to handle the success and failure uh, situations, like errors, that kind of thing. So if the call succeeds, we'll get a JSON response. And I have another class, auth player response, that basically knows how to instantiate itself from that JSON block. And it gives me access, basically, to the data that that block represents. And in the case of authentication, we especially care about the session ID. If the call fails, we'll get an error message, and we can use that to display something to the, to the uh, user or try again. But once we have that session ID, that's what's really important to us, because now we can start interacting with competitions. Since the game on uh, service implements its uh, features through an API and not an SDK, you get to maintain complete control over the look and feel of those features inside your game. So we're not forcing you to use an SDK that uh, enforces some kind of specific UX. You get to control that. In my case, I've retrofitted this. Uh, or I've updated this, this retro style Unity game, so all my UI has kind of a retro look. For this example, I just added a simple button that will take me to the tournament section. And then when the player clicks it, I've elected to throw up this overlay that shows the active competitions that I've set up. So there's a little bit of information about the title, and uh, you can include other things like maybe what's going to be awarded or the maximum participants. In this case, I've elected to keep it uh, small and simple, simply because the retro style doesn't allow for a lot of real estate on the screen. This kind of UI is actually pretty trivial to create in Unity. So we just need to retrieve the information from the game on service in order to generate those UI components for the display. 
again, I've created a model to represent the action that we want game on to take. In this case, it's just retrieving a list of tournaments. And it's derived from a generic request that I defined to handle the actual HTTPS calls. So it keeps track of all the data specific to this kind of request. And it knows the URI that's associated with the game on API that it's going to call. So I can post or get the request and then pass those callback actions for success and failure conditions, just as I did for authentication. And in this case, if I'm successful, I'll actually get back a list of tournament objects. And that data looks like uh, it's, you know, actually, the list is just a list. But each one of those individual items is a collection of data specific to the tournaments that I've defined. And we can display that information to the user if we want, or um, we can just pull out the one thing that we need in order to get even more information about a tournament, the tournament ID. Using that tournament ID and one more API call, we can get additional tournament details, which includes a list of the prize bundles. And the prize bundle is uh, defined at the bottom of the page here. These are all models, by the way, that I just set up for my own use. You can. Um, define your own models in whatever language you want in order to interact with the service as long as you maintain the same fields. Now when the player wants to browse the available competitions, we can create a detail page for each one, including all the info on the prizes that they could win. And then I can add a play button right at the top so they can dive right into the uh, top of the game and, and give it a shot. When they click that button, we want to actually allow them to enter the competition and join the match. So we need to uh, examine our interaction model and see exactly where we are in the process to see what happens next. We've reached this point, which is where the player has chosen to complete, compete. So now to participate in the current session, we need to request entry into the competition, which we identify by the ID that we got back earlier. If the player is admitted to the competition successfully, then GameOn is going to return this match ID so we can start submitting scores for them using that value. Now the player goes ahead and plays the game. They do whatever they're going to do. Maybe they get to the next level, or they die, or they achieve whatever task that we've set out for them. They've gone through one uh, typical run. As soon as we can actually score their status, we can uh, uh, submit that score and post that value back to the service using the same match ID that we got when we, um, when we entered the competition. Now, for this example, I've created just a simple screen in Unity that will show the player's current standing for their last run. And at our request, GameOn will paginate the leaderboard information that we get back. It turns out that there may be a ton of competitors, so it makes sense to add a limit to how much data we get back so we don't have to process it all at once. That data will actually include the name, the rank, and the high score for each of the match leaders, as well as the current player, and a limited number of neighbors that we specify around the player. We can add all that data to the UI however we want, to give the, UR, uh, the player a post-match snapshot of how they did. And then depending on how you set up the match, they may have the opportunity to try again. Not you don't necessarily have to let them try again, but GameOn gives you the opportunity to uh, limit the number of matches that they can participate in. You just need to give them the opportunity to get back into it. Once the competition is over, whether you let the time run out or you explicitly cancel it or terminate it, GameOn goes ahead and calculates all the winners and then awards all the prizes. So it does this automatically. It hands out all the prizes to the top players. But it doesn't actually consider them delivered until the players explicitly accept them. And for digital items, this is handy because it gives you an opportunity to uh, record the entitlement yourself, if it seems appropriate, or um, deal with a remote resource, perhaps, that you only control access to. But for real world prizes, it's actually even more important because it prevents Game On from inadvertently sending something that the player doesn't want to receive. We're talking about a physical item, so we want to make sure that they actually explicitly accept the prize before we send it to them. So whenever they do win, you want to make sure you show them what they've won and then give them the opportunity or the ability to actually physically claim the prize. 
Now, at any time after competition is complete, you can retrieve information about the current player's performance, which includes the details about any prizes that they've been awarded. And then to let the player claim them, you just have to pass a list of uh, prize IDs to the service. There's really not much to this code. It follows the pattern I established earlier, so it should be fairly, fairly straightforward. So how do you go about actually setting up some of these live competitions? Well, there are currently three different ways. Uh, there's the regular API that I just mentioned um, for interacting with the tournaments. But before you can actually interact with the tournaments, you need to set them up somehow. And the most common way that you'll probably do this is through the game on console, which is a web interface uh, on our developer portal. There's also an administrative REST API that I mentioned earlier, which is separate from the game REST API that I just mentioned. And then finally, there's another option based on a powerful feature, which I didn't actually go into today, but um, it's called Player Managed Competitions. And it gives your users the ability to stand up these ad hoc events and invite others to compete. So the game on console is fairly straightforward. It's probably the most common way that most developers will interact with the competitions and create them for their players. It's got a pretty straightforward interface. It makes it easy for anyone on your team to set up events and attach prizes and uh, set time limits and add restrictions to participation. And any operational task that you would might want to perform with respect to a, a competition can be handled from the from the console. And what's great about it is that if you have a community manager or a program manager or um, somebody who is not particularly technical, they can manage the uh, competitive aspect of your game completely from this dashboard, and they don't need any uh, developer support. In some situations, of course, you may actually want to create competitions programmatically. So for those cases, you can turn to the admin API. And it basically exposes all the functionality of the game on console to your code so that you can do all the configuration there instead. And this is completely, completely um, optional. Most games won't use this. But it is one more way for developers to control how the game on service operates inside your game. And that's it, actually, for my whirlwind introduction to the Game On service, brand new service from Amazon. Um, where do we go from here? Well, first, please feel free to start here in the booth. You can see that there's tons of folks here. They've all got these great black staff t-shirts. They're all here available to help you talk about the underlying AWS technology, how you can create better games in general. Uh, there's also the developer, developer portal, the URL. Actually, is right there on the bottom of the screen. And you can get a lot of detailed information about the game on service, as well as a bunch of other services available through Amazon. And then, of course, I highly encourage you to give it a try and experiment with the service itself. Um, plug it into your own game. Let us know how it goes for you and if there are ways that we can improve it. Thank you. And finally, please feel free to connect. I'm always happy to chat, and I'll do my best to help in any way I can. Thank you very much.